So, Mr. Hammond, Dr. Henry Wu, you decide to recreate dinosaurs while using other animals to fill in the gaps. Well, clearly you all didn't make the most realistic dinosaurs. I mean, let's see how your hybrid creations stack up to the real deal. G'day ladies and gentlemen, I'm your host, bringing you all another video. Today, we'll be comparing how the Jurassic Park renditions of dinosaurs that we know and love stack up to the real thing. And I think that there's no better way to kick it off than starting it with the first dinosaur that we see. Well, kind of see in Jurassic Park. The Velociraptor. Now, in JP, these girls stood at 6 feet or 1.8 meters in height and measured around 12 feet or 4 meters in length. They were intelligent killing machines, being capable of opening up doors and even outsmarting Muldoon, one of the most efficient human hunters. They were smart enough to be trained and understand commands from the Chris Pratt. They were also depicted to have various colors and patterns while also being covered in scales. The closest thing that they ever had to feathers was the quills that were located on the top of the heads of the Jurassic Park 3 raptors. They also had long downward facing palms, but compare this to the real life counterpart and the differences are well, more than evident. In reality, Velociraptors grew no more than 1.6 feet or 0.5 meters in height, with their length being around 6.8 feet or 2.07 meters. Now, these fellas may have been smart, but it certainly wouldn't have been opening door levels of smart or our smarting hunter level of smarts. These buttes weren't covered in scales either, but rather coated in feathers that were pigmented to assist them in camouflaging in their environment. Also, their palms didn't face downwards, but rather inwards. If they faced downwards, then their wrists would break. This is a big thing that Jurassic Park has gotten wrong. The raptors in Jurassic Park were technically based on the Deinonychus, but as far as I've seen, apparently the Velociraptor name sounded cooler, so that's what they went with. Anyways, if we're going to compare them, looking at them side by side, the differences are more than evident. Now let's move on to Jurassic Park's most famous herbivore, the Brachiosaurus. This girl had tree trunk legs, which held onto its short and stocky body. It was attached to a long, iconic neck in the form of an S shape. On its head, had a pronounced ridge with its nostrils for some reason being attached to it and almost like a cow it chewed its food. In reality this girl had a much chunkier neck and without the S shape. Its body was more elongated than its film counterpart. Its head would have been far less pronounced with the ridge and its nostrils would have been closely put at the end of the snout. It also wouldn't have been able to chew like a cow. Not sure why they had that in, but uh, yeah. It's more likely that the Brachiosaurus was based off of a Giraffe Titan, whereas when you compare the models, you can see quite the similarities. How about we move on to a newer dinosaur from Jurassic World Dominion, this being Giganotosaurus, so named by Dr. Grant himself as the largest carnivore to ever exist. So I'll be honest, it looks like for Jurassic World, this guy must have been heavily spliced with reptilian DNA. As compared to many of the other JP dinosaurs, it looks a bit much. Starting off at the head, the Jurassic World Giga had a slender and elongated head, which housed large and thick teeth, which were jagged. Clearly, this was to make the Giga look meaner than it was, and I will say, definitely worked. Also, the fact that the Giga has no lips further reinforces the more scary look with the jagged teeth coming out everywhere. While when we look at the body, it had large spikes and osteoderms covering its back. Although I will say, the arm positioning is correct, having a neutral positioning facing inwards, so at least their wrists aren't breaking. However, when taking a look at our most accurate sketches of the Giga, we see clear differences. First off, the jaw. The Giga's jaw wasn't slender and elongated as seen in Jurassic World, but rather stout and compact. The tooth structure also is just plain wrong, as they weren't large nor thick and out of positioning as what was seen. And might I add, having it just out of positioning and random teeth everywhere just doesn't make too much sense at all. Realistically though, Giga would have also had lips on it. And furthermore, there's no evidence of spikes and osteoderms running along the Giga's back, especially ones so pronounced. So yeah, when we take a look at the Giga compared to the most accurate drawings of it, we can see that they went for a far more reptilian build rather than going for any accuracy. But how about we cool off and take a dip into the ocean and look at the notorious marine reptile that defeated the Indominus Rex, the Mosasaur. Now the size of this guy is a bit unreliable at best. Its sizes range from 71 feet or 25 meters long, all the way up to 246 feet or 75 meters long. It's like the size of a kaiju, like Godzilla or something. But let's take what the Jurassic World website had stated and put it around 71 feet. You can tell that these guys were heavily inspired by reptiles such as crocodilians with all the osteoderms that were placed along its back, as well as the lack of 
lips. In reality, the Mosasaur measured around 12 meters in length, being less than half than the smaller estimates of the Jurassic World Mosasaur. Along with this, the real life Mosasaur likely had lips which concealed its teeth. Also, it's likely that the real Mosasaur would have been covered in various scales, as well as skin which resembled shark's denticles, which would have assisted in protecting the marine reptile as well as making it more hydrodynamic when swimming. Now I feel like there's no better way to finish this off than comparing the kings. Sorry, the queens of the dinosaurs. Let's compare the Tyrannosaurus Rex. Now I'll be using Rexy specifically for this, considering that she's the most famous T-Rex out of the Jurassic Park franchise. And let's look at her size. She's approximately 44.3 feet or 13 meters long and 17 feet or 5 meters tall with a weight approximately 9 tons. She's a brownish tan in color and has downward facing palms, of course. For some reason, the Rex has also had poor eyesight, like not even seeing Dr. Grant and the kids when they remained still when they were practically touching. Its skull was also highly rigid and without lips. In reality, the T-Rex would have been approximately 40 feet or 12 meters in length and 15 to 17 feet or four to five meters in height with a rate around 8.5 to 10 plus tons. Now I'll be honest though, Jurassic Park had the size fairly close, but that's where a lot of the similarities practically end. The T-Rex would have had a lot more smoother appearance and possibly a smaller amount of feathers which would have covered its back and neck. Its palms would have obviously faced inwards as I've said this whole video. T-Rex would have also had impeccable eyesight with many scientists saying that it would have had the same if not greater eyesight than a hawk. It would have also likely had lips to help keep their teeth covered and moist, as well as just in general being highly intelligent dinosaurs. But you know what? As far as Jurassic Park's alteration to dinosaurs, I'll say the T-Rex isn't too brutally butched. Anyways, we've reached the end of the video. And to be honest, there is a lot more dinosaurs that I could end up comparing with Jurassic Park in real life, such as the Spinosaurus, Stylophosaurus, Ankylosaurus, and more. If you'd want a part two to this video, then don't forget to like this video and comment down below. As always, don't forget to subscribe, and I'll see you all next time. See ya.